Yo, what's up everyone? My name is Dave and you suck at programming. All right, today we're gonna talk about port forwarding with SSH, SSH local port forwarding. All right, this is useful when you have a remote machine and you wanna connect to some service on that remote machine, but maybe that service is locked down. That service is running on the remote machine, but you have to be on that remote machine to access it. Well, we can port forward from our local machine to that remote machine, then we can access stuff locally. Might be a little confusing. I'll show you what I mean, all right? So here we go, we're on my local machine. This is my Mac, my Mac's name is Studio. And if I curl localhost 8000, you will see that it fails to connect. There is no server running on this local machine, all right? So do I have a server running on 8000? Well, I do. It's on a different machine and it's not accessible from the outside, all right? So let's log in to that other machine. We're gonna open up a different terminal here. We're gonna log into this machine called Arbiter. And then now that we're on Arbiter, we can run localhost 8000 foo.txt. Bam, we can see there's a web server running on this machine called Arbiter and it says, hello, TikTok. Super cool. Well, how can we access this on this machine? The answer is port forwarding and we can do it through SSH so it's secure. How do we do this? Well, we can do SSH dash capital L 8000 localhost 8000. This syntax trips up a lot of people. Keep watching if you want me to sh break down this syntax, all right? I'm gonna demystify it because this is stupidly confusing and it doesn't have to be. It's actually very simple once you understand it. But we log in with this, we go back to our local machine, we rerun that curl command, and bam, look at that. It acts like it's running on the local machine even though it's not. This data is being proxied over the SSH connection to Arbiter and then being flown out of Arbiter effectively to go and hit the web server that's running locally and we can get this information now. So again, back to this syntax. This syntax trips a lot of people up. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to look at this part first. This is the remote machine, okay? This is the machine where the web server is running. It's running on localhost 8000, localhost as seen from the Arbiter machine, okay? This is where the remote stuff is running. This is the local port to open. This is the port on the local end that gets open. So for instance, I could change this to 1234, run it, go over here, change this curl command to uh, grab 1234, and I get the same result. All right, super easy, super simple. In fact, even though I'm locking into Arbiter, there's no reason I have to talk to localhost. There could be a different web server. Maybe I have to jump through Arbiter to get to a different host. Maybe it's on a VPN or something. I can do void. Void is the name of a different machine. Void's not a keyword. Void is the name of a machine, just like Arbiter is the name of a machine. So we're gonna log into Arbiter and we're gonna forward commands locally on port 1234. We're gonna forward requests to void at 8000. So everything stays the same over here. We run this, but we get different output because we're not hitting the web server on Arbiter. We're going through Arbiter to hit the web server on Void, which has a slightly different file for us. All right, so hopefully this demystified local port forwarding for you with SSH.